just want to share a wee scripture with you. All week I've been reminded of this scripture. It's from Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. That's just really encouraged me all week. Sometimes when we're under pressure or we lose a bit of hope and you read a scripture like that and God says, I am making a way in the wasteland. And sometimes we don't perceive it, just like that song says, I maybe don't feel it and I maybe don't see it, but he is a way maker. That's who he is. And he is hope as well. So I hope it blesses you as it's blessed me this week and kept me going sometimes when I've just said, oh, I've had enough, God. But he helps us. And as the other song was, you are my hope, you are my strength, strength like no other.
and welcome to Church Online. It's great to have you back again to join us. I pray this morning uh, so far it's been a great blessing to you and I hope uh, the next uh, few moments, next 20 minutes or so that you spend with us will be not only a blessing but also an encouragement again to the week coming ahead. If, it's a, if you're a first time visitor to uh, Storehouse Church Online, we give you a very special welcome and again we pray this won't be our last visit but again, you'll come back and uh, log in to some of our other sermons that you can see again online by visiting the church website at storehousekilsaith.org. Uh, I want to talk about uh, something that we've been, uh, I spoke recently on about how to come out strong, about coming out strong in lockdown. Things are changing in lockdown. We've been in lockdown forever, but now, of course, the talk is about coming out of lockdown. And it's prompted, and, and I feel uh, spirit led in my mind to talk about coming out. And, and coming out strong was our last lesson. I want to continue that theme uh, this morning with you over the next few minutes about coming out, how we're going to come out strong. And this morning our theme is coming out worshipping. Uh, that's our theme this morning. I, I love worship, um, probably more than I even used to. I heard a, a, a quote uh, not that long ago, actually, which really made sense to me. I think it was one of the final pieces in the worship jigsaw for me. And it was that worship is the plough that tills the soul. I thought that was very good. I'm not a farmer by any means, but I know that when you till the soil, that's preparing the soil for the seed. It allows the soil to uh, absorb the seed and for the seed to grow and develop in the soil. And and, and it, it just made sense to me that when we worship, when we worship God, when, which is what we've been doing just now, when you listen to worship, when you go to church and you're in that uh, period of worship, it's not the excuse to arrive late at church. It's at that point where we're arriving there and we're allowing the worship. The worship is a plow that tells us so. It prepares our hearts to receive God's message this morning. And that's really what I'm basing uh, this next lesson on. Uh, I want to uh, share with you a story. I'm going to paraphrase it for the sake of time. Um, but you can read the story in Second Chronicles in chapter 20. And you've got to forgive my uh, expressions. I try and pronounce some of these names. But it's about King Josaphat. And Josephat was a king of Judea, and he had, I guess, a roller coaster relationship with God, but he was in a good place just now, and he had appointed judges over all the cities in Judea, and he told them to serve the Lord your God. I think in the end of chapter 19, he says, Act with courage, that, the, that may and the Lord... May the Lord be with those who do well. So Josephat was in a good place. He was uh, following God's commandments. And uh, the city of Jerusalem would have been in a great place. And having uh, entered the promised land, they've been settled now for some time. And that's where the children of Israel were. But in verse 1 we read that the armies came out against them. All the, the armies, all the lands which they didn't attack when they took the promised land, which God had said to leave them alone, had decided to band together and attack them. And the word go to Josaphat, and, go to, and uh, verse 2 says he heard of the multitudes that were coming and he was terrified, he was frightened. I guess for them it felt like the whole world was coming against it. And in fear, uh, Joseph claims a nationwide fast for the land of Judah. And it says that the people from all the cities of Judah came to Jerusalem, came to worship and plead with God. Joseph then pleads with God and he, and, and, and he, he lays before them uh, all God has done for them. And he says, you've done all this for us and why are we going to be defeated now? In verse 12, he reads this word. He says, he says for we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. But we do know what to do, and we don't know what to do. But our eyes are fixed on you. And that, that's a fantastic verse, uh, I believe, this morning. That something there's a whole army coming against us, and we don't know what to do. But our eyes are on you. It says, All of Judah stood before the Lord, the little ones, their wives, and their children. And God's word comes to them, comes to them, and, and God tells them this through the prophet. It says, "Do not be afraid for of these multitudes." He says, "For the battle is not yours, but God's. You will need need to fight this battle." He says, "Position yourself well and stand firm. Position yourselves well and stand firm." In verse twenty, it says, "Believe in the Lord your God, and so you will be." established. So Joseph had listened to the prophets and then he started to set up his armies. He started to arrange the army and he arranged, but he did something very unusual. 
He did something so different that I don't know any army who would do this. He says, Joseph had appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out to as they as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. And verse 22, verse 22 tells us this, as they began to sing the praises, the Lord set the ambushes. And he set ambushes and traps and it ended up that the army coming against Joseph and his and the, all his people turned out that they started to fight among themselves and they started killing, killing each other. And as we read on through the story, we read into 26, as they come in verse 24, as they arrive over the hill, what they're faced with is a sea of dead bodies. Not one person was left alive in this army coming to defeat them. They were all dead. In fact, it took them three days to gather all the, the um, they used to take all the, all the, uh, uh, the plunder, all the, all the stuff from the invading army. And they would take that for them, all the jewelry, all the weapons. That's how they would restock their army and they would take stuff back to the city and to the temple. It took them three days to gather all the spoils of war. There was so much. In fact, they went on to say in verse 26 that they named the place Barachai, which means blessing. You know, as, as I said, you've got to excuse my pronunciation of some of these words. I sort of have a hard job getting across in English. Uh, coming from the northeast, I do tend to talk very fast and every now and then I slip back and use some of my old language. And I often see blank faces and I know people are thinking, Mike, what are you saying? And I think sometimes when we read these passages in the Old Testament, it's fine in our own home and we're sitting at our desk, but when we read them in public, it can be so much harder and so much scary. So I see them with confidence. So forgive me this morning. It's a great story. It's a fascinating story. I've enjoyed meditating on this story. And I really felt that, you know, that God was um, putting this upon me to share to you about this coming out worshipping. This is about how we're going to come out of lockdown. How are we going to look as, as Christians? How do we look as followers of Jesus after this period is over? And in the last lesson, and if you missed the last one, I'm sure you can go to the church website, the Storehouse Church website, and look up in the archives, and you'll see uh, what I spoke about. It'll be coming out stronger about what we do now, what actions we take now as Christians will define us after lockdown, how our neighbours see us, what we, what we're kind, what we're passionate. Do we show compassion to our neighbours and to those around us? Do we do what we could in this season, which is a, a hard season, a tough season for many? And today is about coming out worshipping. And again, it's a challenge to a lot of people, you know, to, to worship. It's easy to worship when things are going well. Sometimes it's easy to arrive to church and be into worship. You know, but when we leave church, how are we? Or before church, how were we? But during that season of worship, the period of worship, what we're doing is we're opening our hearts to God. We're surrendering our lives to God. Worship is so important. And it's so important that despite whatever you've gone through in this period of lockdown, that we'll come out the other side worshipping. You know, we're taught in the Bible that whether our barns are empty or our barns are full, we need to praise the name of the Lord. And this is what this, this passage is really is about this morning. And we can take five simple points which I'm going to go through over the next few moments. And I want to just highlight and clarify and point out. The first one was this, that if people were living in fear, they were living in fear, the whole world was coming against them. And it was seeming like, like the, the inevitable was going to happen. There's no way they could fight this army. Joseph, had, the king says that, he says, we, we can't fight this horse. We can't do this. The multitudes are coming against us. And sometimes, you know, we live in periods of fear, especially during the lockdown season. Maybe we've been living in fear. And I want to tell you this morning, it's perfectly normal. Don't feel ashamed of that. And once someone said that living in fear is a sin, no, living in fear is perfectly normal. As, I, as I'm going to show you this morning, you know, we've been living in fear perhaps of our health. Maybe it's the health of our loved ones. Or maybe we've got young children and we're worried about their health. I have three, I have two girls, I'm going to say my three girls, and in case someone panics, I've got two girls and my wife, Susan, they're all out working, my three girls are all out working just now, they're working in, in a, a fish shop, the fresh fish place, and uh, they're, they're, they're serving customers over a counter, and I fear for their health, and every day I have to pray over them, but I'm, I'm fearful for their health, it's perfectly normal, there's nothing wrong with that. 
We're fearful, fearful of our jobs. It can be quite hard to say, especially in the morning, that we can be fearful of our jobs. We don't know this, uh, how this lockdown is going to affect our employment. And of course, to lose one's job can mean, will, will mean to lose your income. But in essence, that could also mean that your house is maybe uh, put in the line or, or other things. You know, it, it just brings challenges and problems and worries that, you know, that we can just live without. And sometimes it's just fear for the future, uncertainty. And I think that's a common thing. You know, one of the, the phrases I hear quite often is, but what if? What if, Mike? You know, I, I think even if we book something nice, um, if we book a holiday and we're going on a holiday and we're packing our bags and we're getting ready to go and there's always a, but what if? What if my, I lose my passport or, but what if the flight gets cancelled or, but what if the weather is rainy? We live as a society, as a people, often with the words, but what if? You know, that's often what we do when looking forward to an event or, or just life in general. And just now we're living with, a lot of but what ifs. And in Luke chapter 12, you know, Jesus tells us to do not worry about tomorrow because not one of you can add a single day, minute, or hour to our lives by worrying. And we're taught to look at the grass, um, the, the grass in the field, we're taught to look at the sparrows, the birds, how God clothes them. And He loves us so much more than that. But you know, they had, they were living in fear. And often, as I said, we could be living in fear right now. And how did they overcome it? Well, that's our second point. They made a declaration. What are you making a declaration for this morning? Are you living your life in fear without declaration? But do you know this morning you can make a declaration over your life? You know, the people of Judah said this. I love this phrase. It says, we have no power, but our eyes are on you. We have no power. We have no control over the virus uh, or how it's going to spread. We have no control over these things. And we have no control over the decisions that other people make, whether it's our employers, the people who own businesses. We have no decisions over that. We have no decisions over uh, who the hospital decide to admit or don't admit, who doctors can help and not help at this point in time. You know, there, there, are, there are decisions that we cannot make. And they knew that. This hordes are coming against them and says, we have no power, but our eyes are on you. And I'm going to ask you a question this morning. Who is your eyes on this morning? You know, we wake up in the morning and the first thing we do is we, we flick on Sky News or we flick on the BBC News. You know, what we're doing is we're feeding our mind with this thing's first in the day. You know, maybe you're living this today for the BBC One update at one o'clock with Nicola Sturgeon. Or maybe your, your, your life is revolving around the BBC updates at five o'clock with the UK government. <clears throat> and, you know, that means that there were, our eyes are on the wrong place all of the time. Maybe your eyes are on social media and Facebook or, or Instagram. You know, uh, uh, you know, reading conspiracy theories of maybe how that the 5G telephone network caused co coronavirus or, or some other crazy conspiracy theory that will be proved in time to be absolute nonsense. Scaremongering, you know, looking on you to, to see what's happened to whoever today, you know, or is your eyes this morning on your Father God? It's so important that you be aware of what you're feeding your mind on. And there's no doubt at all that people in Judah that their eyes were upon God. That's what they said. We have no power, just as you and I have this morning. We have no power, but our eyes are on you. The third thing was, is that they stood on God's word. The prophet had already declared to them, he said, God says this, it is not your battle, but it's God's. I'm going to tell you this morning, I'm going to declare that over you this morning, this is not your battle. Whatever you're going through this morning, whatever your challenges is just now, it is not your battle, it is God's battle. And the battle is already won. That's what God came from God's word. He says to position yourself and stand firm. That's a strong statement, to position yourself and stand firm. That means to take up your post to take up your guard and to stand firm in your faith. That's what they were called to do. You know, that's a call to stay connected to God. It's a call to do what Jesus would do during this tough time. Regardless of our own personal situation, whatever we're going through, it's a call to do what Jesus would do. That's what I spoke, I spoke about in a previous lesson, to get there and love your neighbour, to do what we can, to, to really be a light in your local community. You know, there's two fantastic verses very close to each other in this passage. You know, I went to read them both to you, and I thought they were brilliant. You know, in, in verses, um, on uh, verse 17, it says this, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow. What a great passage. Do not be afraid. 
and to go out and face it tomorrow. Don't be afraid. Put your, put your fears aside. It's perfectly normal if, if you're going through, struggling through tough times to make a declaration. But to not be afraid and don't be discouraged, but to go out and face them tomorrow. And the Lord will be with you. And you know, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. But in verse 20, now that this is a year 2020, and in, verse, in chapter 20 of verse 20, 2020, it says this, Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. That is a great verse to stand on for 2020. If you take nothing else from this passage this morning, or, or from this lesson this morning, maybe you can make 2020 your declaration, Second Chronicles 2020, to have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets. That's those who are teaching you God's words. That's who are speaking over you. And you will be successful. That's, that's a great mission statement, I believe, for 2020. You know, and I thought it was great just to, just to share that sort of word with you. That they stood on God's word. I trust this morning that you are standing on God's word. But don't be afraid, but go out. And if, this brings me to my fourth point. To go out worshipping. Man, that is a great statement, to go out worshipping. You know, I want to be known as someone who goes out worshipping. You know, that goes out my door worshipping. That's going out not knowing what to expect. They didn't know what was before them. They they, they, they go out not seeing. They didn't know what was happening over the hill. It's okay for us. We read the story. We see the ending. We know the enemy is being defeated as they walk out. But it says, but they walked out worshipping, not knowing, not seeing, facing uncertainty. They went out worshipping. They couldn't see that God was already moving. They went out singing and praising before the army. I read, I thought, who does that? If you go into battle, I'm sure if I was a, a commander or a lieutenant in, a, in an army, and I'm, I'm going to war to, to face my enemies. This is not like modern warfare where it's done at long distance. This is done face to face where they see the whites of each, other's eyes, each other's eyeballs, so to speak. You know, I want to make my army as intimidating as possible, to look as big as possible, and to look as grand as possible. And maybe the enemy will run away scared. Maybe he'll do a runner, and they won't attack us. And we would have to go into battle. But that's not what Joseph does. The king puts his worshippers first. The worshippers go out singing and praising before the army. And they sing these words and give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. This is them going out to face an enemy that the Bible described as multitudes, hordes. Joseph had said, there's no way, Lord, we cannot defeat this vast army. That's what he says. Yet they go and declare and give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. You know, uh, the lockdown, this, this period of lockdown and COVID-19 is brought upon uh, some hard days for many people out there, you know, and, and, it's, and it's hard, some have lost loved ones, and, you know, but, but I'm imploring you this morning to go out worshipping, to continue to worship God, because in verse 22, the whole uh, crux of the chapter, the whole thing of the passage is this, it says, as they began to sing, as they began to sing, God moved. You know, as you began to sing, as you start to worship God this morning, He will move in your life. He will do something in your life. You know, maybe it'll just be bringing, it'll be bringing comfort and peace into your heart over a situation that you're going through. Maybe it will be to start working on a situation you've been praying into. You know, that is down the road that you have no way of resolving or fixing. But it says here that they, when they began to sing, God moved. I think that's an amazing, an amazing verse in verse 22. In good times or bad times, we need to begin to sing. And how does this all end? How does it all tie together? Well, and it's our last point. And again, uh, we read this. It says, you know, what the, 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 it says it became the season of fear became the season of blessing. What a powerful end to this story. You know, they gathered so much stuff from this. When they came over that hill and they saw the enemy defeated in front of them, there was no one left alive and they had to gather the spoils of war and take back to the city of Jerusalem. You know, it took them three days. It was their greatest ever blessing. What was their biggest season of fear became their greatest, their season of blessing. When they faced their biggest enemy, when they faced defeat, when they were looking at defeat 
in the eye. When they were looking at the feet in, in, the, in, in, in the face, it became a place of blessing. How was your walk this morning? I, I know this morning, as I've said already, maybe you're in a place of fear. Maybe you're in a place of, of uncertainty. Maybe you feel like you're staring defeat in the, in the face. And there's no way to escape from that this morning. Maybe you just you, you just don't know what's ahead and you just cannot see his victory. I'm telling you this morning to stop living in fear. To stand, start making a declaration over your life. To stand on God's word by putting it first in your life. Not Sky News, not BBC News, not Facebook or social media. But to put God's word first in your life. Fill your, your house with praise. Put on a worship CD or tune into Christian radio stations as we often do. When you're driving to, to work in your car. You know, what are you listening to in your car? Is it news reports or is it the morning breakfast show on the radio? But you could be filling your car of worship. If you're commuting to work this morning in your headphones or you're going in your Boris walk, what is it you're letting go through your mind? But you know, it's, it says it's, it's to lead with praise. Go out worshiping. Live it. Stop living in fear. Make a declaration to stand in God's word. To go out worshiping. And as you began to sing, as they began to sing, God moves. God can't move if fear is first in your life. God can't move if you're putting the BBC News first in your life. God can't move if, if your life depends on Facebook or Instagram or other social media outlets. You know, he wants to be first in your life. And it says, as they began to sing, God moved. You know, and how it ended, it ended in what was a season of great blessing. We don't know what's ahead of us this morning, but I know that if we put God first in our lives, that we worship him first in our lives this morning, we will look back in this COVID-19 and realise that it's been a great blessing. You know, that may be hard for some to hear this morning because you just can't see how that can possibly be. But when things are tough and things are hard, that's when you get closer to God. That's when you can see God, how God has moved in your life. We personally, as a family, been through that. We can look back and we thought, wow, if it wasn't for God, where would I be right now? You know, and, and that, you know, has became some of our greatest blessings. Some of our toughest times, we can look back and see how it was. Some of our greatest blessings. You know, I pray for you all this morning. I pray that this morning will be a blessing for you. And, and uh, I hope it's been an encouragement and a blessing in the week ahead. Don't forget, if you want to watch any of the other sermons by uh, through the Storehouse, you can visit the Storehouse a website and simply go and watch click the links on there and watch and let's just pray before we uh, finish up this morning father god we give us over to you father i pray that the uh, the message that you put in my heart has come across uh, in, a, in a way that makes sense father that it doesn't matter what we're going through just now it doesn't matter whether our fears are justified father or or whether they're unjustified father that we know that if we put you first if we make a declaration over life that you are first we don't know, Father, there's things that we can't do nothing about. But, Father, our eyes are on you this morning. I pray this morning that our eyes are firmly fixed on you, Father. And I pray that this season of lockdown will become our greatest ever season, Father. And that you will come out of this worshipping in your Saviour's name. Amen. God bless, take care, and have a great week.